we're talking about this here manual transaxle. This right, this manual transaxle here is more or less like the ones, and you and Abby still need to finish putting that other one back together over there. Mm -hmm. and the one that smacked you around. Well, well, we're almost done. We just got to put those two yeah. top gears on. Yeah, this particular manual transaxle here is like the one that I've got that you can't see because of all these boards that's over here. <laughs> this is pretty much the, that one over there. You might notice, what is something you notice usually whenever you're looking at a manual transaxle? You, the shaft, the input shaft has got something that this one is missing. Have you noticed? It doesn't have the little pilot for a pilot bearing, one of the clutch. You seen that? Mm, yeah. That one doesn't have that. If you look at this little stub shaft. Dummy. Alright, so it's important that you recognize that. Alright, so we'll bounce forward to the next one. On this one here, this is a cable operated clutch. You might notice that the, and this is like on that little escort that we got out there, and it's like a transit over there. Right, here's your clutch panel, and you got this. Right here, on the, on the Volkswagens I worked on, there was a big plastic nut right here, and it was super easy to adjust the clutch. You just screw that nut until that clutch didn't have hardly any play. You see? But as the clutch wears out, and as the uh, clutch disc gets thinner, what happens to the clutch pedal? How does it begin to feel? Squishy. Actually, it gets tighter. It gets closer to the top because the flywheel and the pressure plate are getting closer to one another. And so you're going to feel it getting up. Now, whenever uh, Eric Dunn was here, and he actually did a, uh, he bought this uh, Dodge Stealth, which was a Mitsubishi clone. After he got the engine fixed, somebody had, you know, it bent the valves. I mean, it jumped time, bent the valves, all that kind of thing. He had to pull heads off. We did a valve jump on the heads and put it all back on. It. This thing had dual overhead cam. It had a monster timing belt, you know, like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, Eric got it all put back together. And he's working over there at uh, Performance. Quick change now, you know, he's helping them over there. But anyway, the long and short of it was when he got it back together and he's driving it, the clutch was right on top and it was slipping a little bit. Well, on his, right in here, there was a little uh, push rod coming off of it, a little clevis, and a little, I looked up for another little adjustment on it. So, on that particular one, you could actually adjust it so that the clutch pedal wasn't so tight on the top. And he actually still had enough clutch left to where he didn't slip or anything, which is pretty cool because we didn't have to pull the train of that clutch for the clutch in that one. But long and short of it is, uh, any adjustments you have is going to be on this cable right here. On the VW, it was right there. You're going to see it on other places. Now, most of them nowadays, including uh, even our little escort that we got out there, and this is probably a little older now, has got a hydraulic slave cylinder on it. So that's it. And you know how that works. So, but anyway, that's a cable. Spent a lot of time on that. This is a clutch, obviously, uh, you know, nothing wrong here. Uh, you've got this little, this goes through here on that. When that pulls, this goes forward, pushes that against the pressure plate, the pressure plate releases the clutch disc, you know, and this flange shaft goes into the flange shaft and the uh, there and the flywheel is there, this is all bolted up to that. Any, everybody in here has had their hands on a clutch. Have you ever touched a clutch? Have you touched a clutch? You weren't here that day, were you? Okay, or you left earlier or something. But what about you? Did you touch a clutch? You touched a clutch. What did you put a clutch in? Uh, Nissan, a hard body. What about you? Uh, 92 Ford Ranger. All right, now who put the clutch in the Escort? You did that, didn't you? So there was lots of stuff going on there with, the, with our clutches. We've done some clutches in here. And everybody got a chance to touch a clutch. Okay, now you got to memorize these parts. This is, there's going to be a pop test on this uh, Monday morning. Well, first thing. Okay. <laughs> So, Here, let me take a picture. I'm going to say, uh, what was part 46? <laughs> you got to remember all that. I'm actually kidding on that. I was so alarmed. <laughs> Somebody talked about a pop test. You're going, oh, no, you know. <laughs> Look at all the parts on that. How many parts are there? Somebody can somebody tell me? I don't know. Oh, 122. Where do you see? Where do you see 130? I was guessing. Well, look, I mean, isn't 122 as far as it goes? Yeah. All right, now, somebody tell me, uh, well, I think I, I'm going to not even point them out later. Somebody tell me, show me where the differential is. Because it's a transaxle. A transaxle has got the differential and the transmission built together. That would be parts 114 and 115 and 116 and that sort. That's right. You've got that right down there. Now, this right here, what does this little gear right here do? Why has it got a gear? What? That thing don't splash over. Yeah. Usually, go before you come in here. Well, what happened? Why didn't you go before you come in here? Okay, well, take your time. You know, we'll probably be through by the time you get back. 
Okay. All right. So right here. Year in. It, how did you know this? <laughs> it's right. It's plastic it's gear. It's interact with part 60. There's going to be another plastic gear it's going to touch. What about this one? That would be it. Yeah. What does that do? What's that do? What's the purpose of that? It's just slinging lube. Why do they put gears to sling lube? There's more to it than that. I don't well, know. It has to be so turning at a particular speed. It, okay, it so it's going to turn. What is this part right here? That sensor, speed sensor. Speed sensor. Bingo. Good, good, good call, Daniel. So you got a, you got this gear. It's on the final drive. This is called the final drive down here. Come the CV axles click into here, and then you got this little rails here for your shifter stuff and all that. And, you know, pay attention to that little piece right there. And what are these right here? What are these items? Shift works. Shift works. Bingo. All right. So you can see how all this stuff works. You can actually look at the way this exploded view. See, this is pretty cool because if you got an exploded view of whatever transmission you're working on, when you go to the parts guy, you're going to be able to tell him, I want part number 32 and part number 20. And he can actually look those up with your exploded view and say, his is going to call it something else than what yours. And you don't have a legend down here that's going to have you the name of all those parts, too, which is a pretty good question. What is... Right in here, what would you, because, I don't know, I guess I have a shift fork that goes in here on the other one. Yeah, well, that's that actually a different thing. That's a, that like Corolla is slightly different. You see the three shafts? This has got three shafts. There's three shafts and there's three bearings, and those three shafts are right here. One, two, three. Yeah, that's just like the Corolla. Yeah, they do, except on yours it goes all the way through. Yeah. And they do fifth gear in a different way on that Corolla. Uh, this one here is a little easier to work on than Corolla. The Corolla smacked you guys around because it was tough, wasn't it? Yeah, almost, almost then, done. Just well, I was helping Abby there one day when you weren't here, and we had to actually uh, go to extraordinary lengths to uh, devise pullers to pull them gears off the end because they were only tight. Yeah, because I, now I can't get them back on. Yeah. Well, you're basically going to have to be creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hammer and duct tape. Yeah. Duct tape? All right. Yeah. Hold on. Because if you break the gears, you just got to hold them together. See, this right here is an extremely simple shift mechanism. Do you understand what you're looking at there? Mm -hmm. You got that? See that? What is this? Anybody got any ideas? Mm -hmm. I see two wires and a wire connector. And a little switch of some kind. This is a manual transmission. What wires goes to a manual transmission besides the speed sensor? Wires? Yeah, there's some wires. There's actually a switch on a manual transmission. What's it do? The clutch thing? Yeah, that's actually on the clutch pedal. Only, Good only, question. Huh? The only wires to man. Huh? The amateur sensor. Amateur sensor. Amateur. Oh, why do you need to know how hot the manual transmission is on an escort? Come on, give me a break. You're going to face palm when I tell you this. They have backup lights, don't they? <laughs> I was trying, y'all were trying to make it harder than it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, there's your old boot. This is a shifter. This goes down through there. That engages this. This is what hooks the little lever on your trans transaxle. All right. This one here is inside the transmission. See how that hooks up? See all these shift rails and everything? Uh, the angle of these shift rails could be pretty intimidating can you, if you're not careful. But, uh, but Sean actually got that other one back together. You know, that's pretty good. What's that? Sir? What? Oh, uh, I'm saying Sean had what do you call it, a shift rail? Yeah, that's a shift rail here. Yeah, that long pin. I didn't we really didn't see that over there. Yeah. Oh, that's it. They put it together right. There, it's over for them. All right. Remember this little piece right here. You know, see that little piece right there? That's an interesting little part, isn't it? All right. Now then, major components. All right. You see this right here? See all the shafts? Is that cool or what? Yeah. See how the looks like the one that uh, uh, coming back together. Man. All right. Now, where's the differential? Down there in the bottom. Down there in the bottom. You're gonna recognize that because you got the little spider gears in there, right? Mm -hmm. Recognize that. This right here. What, what part is that? I need another name of that. We need to list the name of that. What is it? Ring gear is a good answer. Absolutely. Uh, Web, Web knows it. All right. Now, what's this part right here? Okay, now where do your shift forks engage this stuff? 
collars. Oh. Uh, e. <laughs> don't point at it. There and there. Pretty much right. You got three there. All right, there we go. He's got those picked out. All right, now let's jump ahead another one. This is how we have in neutral. And we're going to go through the questions in our test in a minute, but I'm giving you these visuals, right? I want you to look at what kind of bearing this thing has. You know these cone shaped bearings that are kind of like wheel bearings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they got in there? You've actually got to set those up for little shims and stuff so you set the preload on them when you put them back in there. Better way to do all that. Not really all that complicated. One way or another, you got right here, you got power coming in here. That's in neutral. None of these are engaged anywhere, and so it's going nowhere. Now, you might want to notice that that right there and this right here, aren't they the same piece? That and that? Mm -hmm. I mean, this piece and that piece. I'm sorry, I moved on. Mm -hmm. that, one, that gear looking thing and this are the same part. Are they not? No. Yeah, they are. Why would you need that? Why would you need that? Why would you need a gear on this slider here? What, co what possible purpose would that serve? Now you guys have done manual oh, transmission, right? some of you, huh? Reverse. Reverse. That's a good answer. See, he's, he's thinking. Okay, so there's your ring gear. There's your spider gears. There's those little bearings there that you got to set your preload on. Uh, this right here, you got. It's going nowhere. On neutral. You just sitting here. This is turning. This stuff's all freewheeling. That's not being driven. First gear. Now let's look what's going on here. We're going in, we're going down, we're going out with the ring gear, and we're going out with the wheels. But look at the ratio. We got not we got lots of turns in the engine, not very many turns in this big monster gear here. That's a low gear. How many of you ever rode a ten speed bicycle? Yeah. When you're in low gear, the gear you start out in, or actually the gear you're going up a long hill. Like if you're going to pedal up a long hill, you're going to put it in what gear? first. All right. What's going on in first? Your pedals are just churning away. The device is not going that fast, right? Mm -hmm. Just like your car. You just turn it faster. Your car is not going that fast. Are we getting this? Is there anybody that's not getting it? What about you, Cookie Monster? You get it? All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. Bless his heart. I knew that he didn't mind being called that because yesterday he wore a Cookie Monster shirt. <laughs> okay. All right. Now what? Oh, did you see what just happened? Yeah. Watch this. See that thing move? See what moved? All right. Now see. Watch this. We're in neutral first. See how that thing moved right there? That puts you in first, didn't it? All right. Now we're gonna go to set. Uh oh. Neutral. First gear. Second gear. All right. Now what's going on? Splitting two. This is actually going all the way to this next gear. See, we got that one that gear. We go up to this next gear, and it's going out this way too. You notice that what looks like the main shaft on this, on the uh, regular the rear wheel drive manual transmission, the main shaft is connected to the engine, isn't it? On this one here, the cluster gear is connected to the engine. See, it's a different kind of a setup. It's the only way they can make it work, I guess. All right, so you come in here, you come into the second gear, which is a slightly larger gear than that one goes down, and now you've made this a part of that, and that output, which on a, you know you would expect to kind of go out to your drive shaft, is actually going right to your ring gear and out that way. This is turning a little faster, and this is turning a little slower. All right, you released the clutch, and you got that. Third gear. All right, now look what happened between third and second. See? See how that one moved? This one here moved. See that? That's first gear. That's third gear. See how that one clicked forward? All right, this suddenly made that gear a part of this shaft. And so now the engine is driving a slightly larger gear than it was driving before. And you're getting a little more speed picked up here. Incidentally, do you know what kind of fluid this transmission takes? ATF. Yeah, just pure automatic transmission fluid. I never did like that because you get a spring a little bit of a leak on one of these. That stuff gets gone in a hurry. And uh, I've known of one of these things just burning up without warning on a trip. You get like sprung a transmission leak and just burn the transmission to a crisp. All right. Let's go to our next one. There's fourth gear. Look what happened in fourth gear. This 
pin, the sleeve slipped back, get locked that on there, and look at there, all the way back. Now you notice these two gears right here are the same size. That is one to one. For every turn of the engine, you're getting a turn of this right here. But what is the ratio right here, would you say? Between that gear, how many turns of that gear are you going to get for your ring gear? I think one, one well, turn above uh, that thing is going to turn the other gear a seventh of the way or an eighth of the way or something. Uh, usually on a front wheel drive car, the ratio between the ring gear and pinion is about three and a half to one. And it's going to be, you know, like 3.45 or 3.62 you know, or something hard watch like that. But just remember, this gear is only about a third as big as that one as far as the number of turns it takes for it to go through. Typically. That's a typical value. It's not, you know, you can take it to the bank every time. Now what do you think is going to happen when we put it in fifth gear? It's going to that collar that hasn't done anything up there. Had to flip it over, didn't we? We had to be able to see power flows. We had to turn the transmission upside down to see power flow. This view is inverted with a differential at the top to show the fifth gear shaft pinion and final drive gear engagement. And right here, we're going here, up there. Yeah. What's see, up? this one and that one are both engaged. With a ring gear, isn't it something? What do you think about that? That's a totally different shaft. Both of them are engaged in the ring gear all the time. But this one's only pulling whenever you click that one in, right? This one, these are all in neutral. That one there's clicked in, now you got fifth gear. Well, right, we gotta hurry. That's reverse. Got it? Okay, now then, let's flip this thing around, and we're gonna take us about 10 minutes to go through our test. All right, let me. Test, test seven. What did you got? Test eight. We're not going to do this week. We're going to do it next week. All right. Let me hurry up here because we need to get going. Um, input cluster gear shaft has how many forward gears and reverse gear? What? The input cluster gear shaft has. Huh? What you got? Technician A says. Wow. This is one that Adam gave out right here, wasn't it? Okay, well, this is one we're going to do today. What do you think about that? Which is. Huh? Which huh? Are That's tough. You just get you a piece of paper. Flip it over. Look at Willie. See how quick he did that? <laughs> All right. You ready? Huh? This is a pop test. This is a pop test. We're going to fail. Give him some paper. Give him some paper out there. Everybody's going to just make a, make a sheet. Yeah, yeah. Don't matter. We need to go through this. Make it happen. Everybody gets a piece of paper. Number it one through ten. <laughs> Consider this a pop test. Okay. Okay. Now then, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to do this, this is going to be your questions, I'm going to throw your questions up around the screen, I'm going to be able to do that, you got it? Mm -hmm. uh, the cluster gear shaft, look at the number one, the input cluster gear shaft has how many forward gears and reverse gear? You know what the answer to that is? Huh? What do you think? Five? No. No. Six. Three. Three. It's actually C. It's four. four. Yes. Now think about this. You remember when I had to flip it over to show you the fifth gear? But all the rest of the gears was on that other shaft, remember? Got me? All right, now then, let's move on. Gear rollover noise. Uh, this is something that I didn't really cover in this little PowerPoint. But gear rollover noise is basically normal noise that you're going to hear on a manual transmission. And typically, uh, these are the three things. Like, it will disappear when the transaxle is engaged. It will be caused by engine, tor engine torsional vibrations. And it's sometimes mistaken for transaxle bearing noise. There's nothing wrong with it if you hear a gear rollover. We used to get them coming under warranty where people want that fixed. If any aluminum transaxle case threaded hole is damaged, helicoil type service kits may be purchased from local jobbers and installed to repair the holes. True or false? 
You're not supposed to do that. Don't don't even don't even go there. Now I will tell you this: if I was working on my transactional and I needed, I had a hole stripped out, it would get a helicoil so fast it'd make your head spin. But this was published by the manufacturer, and they said we don't want you putting helicoils in our case. I think it's because they want to sell you a new case and it's expensive. So that's just for me talking. So you know, use that you know, money. If uh, let's see, number four, what's the purpose of the part? Back up lights. Back up lights. There you go. You remember that picture, didn't you? Yeah. Number five, what is the name of this part? Ooh, you didn't really actually have a chance right. to tell what right. the name of that part was. Uh, right. Fifth and reverse Actually, there's a control selector. I was just checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Control selector. See number five, Abby? Yeah. That's the control selector. See that funky little fork thing? That's control selector is B. Operate the flux capacitor. Yeah. yeah. That's only if you're going to go back to the future. All right, now number A. What is A? First gear. First gear. Okay, good answer. He's got a first gear there. Okay, what is B? Third gear. Okay, B is. You sure? Yeah. 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 No, wait a minute. Look how it's going. No, no, it's second. It's second. You got first. Yeah, no, it's second. One, second gear. Yeah, it's second. All right. Now then. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are those, what you doing? Are, those, are we writing them down like first, second? First and second like that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just write them down. So seven, was, wait a minute. Yeah, A is first. It's a two part. I mean, wait a minute, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, six is going to be. Uh, answer for the question. A and B. Yeah, A is, yeah, six, yeah, six, and it's got A, B, C, and D. You're going to label all, all four of those. Yeah, basically. That's the way I had that done. I was trying to figure out a good way to do that. Okay, give me a break. All right. And number C. Number C. Yeah. Now we're actually still on question six. What is C? C is very good. And what is D? Somebody tell me what D is. D is fourth gear. That's right. Now see, this is very encouraging because you guys can look at that stuff now. If I hadn't shown you that presentation, you wouldn't know, would you? All right. Okay, now this is something you really had no way of knowing. This clutch disc is six inches in diameter and has eight torsion springs to dampen vibration. True. That's false. That's actually false. The main shaft input cluster gear shaft and fifth gear shaft bearing pre preload is maintained by a selected shim behind each shaft's bearing cup in the transmission case. That is absolutely true. You know, I, remember I told you there were shims behind those cups to set that preload? That's how they do that. Okay, number nine. What you got here? Uh, or what's behind door number three? Okay. Uh, gear rattle that is distinctly noticeable under lugging conditions is detrimental to the transaxle even if the appropriate gear ratio is selected for vehicle speed. That's actually false. And then finally, number 10, right before we bail out and go to lunch, throw out bearing noise can easily be checked by doing what? A, removing the clutch release cable and sliding the throw out bearing away from the contact with the pressure plate. B, removing the half shafts and spinning the wheels to see if the noise persists. C, tightening the clutch release cable to see if the noise go away. Actually, you would say A, A on that. If you remove the clutch release cable, you're basically, if you've got this throw out bearing away from those fingers and it's not turning and the noise goes away, see what I'm saying? And you're basically going to take your cable loose so that it's not always touching. And on these, it always touches. Years ago, uh, back in the 70s, if, if we, were, we were told if the throw out bearing is against the clutch disc all the time, then it's going to be bad for the throw out bearing. After that, all that went out the window. Because on these, it's against it all the time, and on those concentric ones that are hydraulic, it's against the fingers all the time. But if you can get it away from that, uh, it's not touching, and the noise goes away, you know it's a throwout bearing noise. Is everybody happy with that? What was number eight? Number eight? Uh, I don't remember. True. Yeah. <laughs> now, on that gear noise, um, won't a helical gear make less noise than a spur gear? Yeah, spur gears are noisy as all get out. You're right about that. But as far as the gear rollover, gear rollover noise is a sort of a rattling noise when the engine's running and it's in neutral. You'll just hear the little bit of gear moving in there, but it doesn't mean there's a problem. Put a thicker oil in it. Yeah. Now, what test is it? That one there. It was supposed to be.